Good afternoon, all. I wrap Zena Flynn and Associates with your Spider ETF wrap-up for this Wednesday, and we are at the 10th of March, 2021. So I'm getting questions, where am I with that special course? I've got on Bollinger Bands and Slow Stochastics. I'm working on it. Took me a little longer to get to a certain point that I'm at right now. I thought it would be a snap over the weekend. I have one more thing to do in it for uh, the layout, and then once I start recording it, it flies. Uh, you know, I can probably knock off all the recordings in a day. It's laying out the sequencing and what the recordings are going to do. So I'm on that. Want to remind you all that I do appreciate as you hit subscribe on YouTube so that these videos come right to you. That's very important. If you have questions, just write to me there. If I can answer them, if the regulators allow me uh, in certain veins to do that, I do. So we're looking at these markets moving along. I was just watching uh, AMC, which is up about a dollar in the uh, aftermarket. And I was just watching uh, Lightshed. I don't, I don't know if you know the company, but they're making a call on it that is basically saying a penny stock. And the rationale being they have $5 billion in debt. The rationale being that in a good year, they took in 700 million. How do you pay off the debt? Got a good point. So it's a very difficult part. You'll say people are going back and I'm going, yeah, but you've got, and I understood the argument that I heard today from Mr. Greenfield, people the, and, and the companies that release movies, uh, their rationale is they can release them at home. I owned a discount movie theater. I don't know if you've ever been to those. They get the releases. I, this was years ago. And they would get the releases about three weeks after they came out. And you'd offer them at a real discount price with the idea that people would come in and they'd buy the uh, concessions. We got that wrong because uh, the people that want the discount movies also either want discount candy or they don't buy it. And that's where you made your money. You know, another one of my swing for the things. I've had some winners, but you know, plenty of losers too. If you don't go to the base, if you don't go to bat, <laughs> what fun is it? When you look at that, you can see THS uh, X still slipping back. You got some of these others coming up. A mixed bag. You had the QQQ down again today. But we had good rallies in SPY and DIA. And what happened on the futures is a number, excluding QQQ, a number of the markets have said, okay, we formed a trade bottom. That's very important. Now, whether they've turned up, I've got my doubts. We know the Dow is at an all-time high, but that's select. That's 30 stocks. When you go to the broader indices, that isn't quite what you're seeing. So let's take a look at GameStop, which is on fire. The market, certainly after the big run-up and pullback, it held that $50 mark, and it's, it's gone up again dramatically. Today, it hit $348.50. Then it sold off from those highs and finished up $18. So what did it give back? <laughs> gave back almost $80 a share. Wow, from that rally. But it's a big rally into this resistance zone. The trend is up. We see that on our work. It's been up with higher lows, higher highs. It has now got... How many sessions over the upper Bollinger Band? Well, today you finished at 265, which is still over the band. So you got three in a row. It's not a futures contract, which five is really pushing it. You can get a few more, but probably not much. A warning sign would be you got a big outside day up. I have a rule of thumb that if you take out the low of an outside day up within two trading sessions, that that is often a signal the market's going to revert down to the closest moving average and or a Bollinger Band. Well, the Bollinger Bands are way down here. Over, well, Let me put my hand in the right spot right here. The moving averages are right here. So that would be the moving average. We'll see if that happens or not. First of all, it hasn't gone down to that number. AMC bucking up against the upper Bollinger Band, overbought as can be, not trending. You have a lower and low, higher high. Pave, another new high. You know, today's rally in the market, I don't think was that hard to say we we're going to have an up day. If you do, then what are you missing? I think what you're missing is the COVID bill in Congress got passed, and that's positive in terms of market sentiment, what traders think. Got to accept that. It's now passed. That doesn't mean the impact isn't going to be there and be positive, because it is. A lot of places are going to get the money. But what it also does is it's another event that's happened, and the market that wants to go up is always looking for new events and new things. In any case, stimulus. 
That's the word. I should get rid of the name PAVE and write stimulus because that's what I think this is going to be all about. When you look at the stock, you have a pattern of a lower low and a higher high. This is now called a vertical price rise. You've gone from 22.39 up today's high of 24.43. You haven't corrected. And if you'll notice, when a vertical rise happens, you often get just higher highs on the rise. You don't take out and get a, one of those days where it just drops back normal and comes up like you were getting here. You don't seem to get those. Okay, it'll run out of steam when it runs out of steam. Where? That's the question. Well, we can see the market's been fighting and did fight the battle at the 18-day average. Once it got over it, it's managed to do a pretty good job of holding that. So where's the resistance? Well, I think it's right here, the upper Bollinger Band. So you had a day, two days under it when you hit it. Now you're over it. I think you're going to play back and forth there. And I say that because you're not embedded yet. You have an overbought market over the upper Bollinger Band. Only 5% of the time do you typically stay over it. Is is that a reason to get short? Absolutely not. Is it a reason for the pros to take money off the table? Absolutely. That's the way I look at it. Do they have to take all of it? Everybody decides their own trading pattern. THCX, this was the market coming down. You bounced off the Bollinger Band, which I typically expect. The resistance should be wherever that 18-day average comes in. Today, you got to 2076. You didn't quite hit it. 2093 is the number, but you're in the resistance zone. You're probably going to get a market setup where you get lower highs. You've got lower lows. And then if you get over the high today, if I'm right on that setup, which is a big if, uh, then I think the market can get interesting when it gets back over that. Right here, I think you got a trading bottom and nothing else going for it. No trend. SMH is still very weak. You still have the pattern of lower highs, lower and lows. So, so far, even though President Biden said he's very concerned about our uh, shortfall in semiconductors and the shortages of them and the impact, I haven't seen anything in the government to help this, and the market keeps sinking away. The market found its bottom, at least a trade bottom, at the 100-day average in the lower Bollinger Band. It is oversold. Both numbers are not under 20. You're just oversold. So a trade bottom in place, bearish, and I don't, do not, that's the word, think you'll necessarily attract selling up there because you're oversold. In the industrial sector, well, of course I'm friendly to the market. I think a boom's right around the corner. How could you not? Now you got the COVID relief bill. Every day you go out, there's more people out. Uh, I went out this morning and I saw people jogging, running. It was 70 degrees nearly in Chicago today. So people are happy. We've got a cold front coming in. It's going to go back into the 40 degree weather right away. But that's March. It comes in like a lion, goes out like a lamb. Remember that in school? Um, so away you go right through there. Okay, I get it. It's overbought, riding the lower Bollinger Band in an uptrend. Okay, I think the pros are taking money off the table. In XLE, the energy sector, you're still embedded. Until it loses it, you know, you got to go down with that ship. You're buying the pullbacks and you're looking for the upper Bollinger Band each time. Now, if a market doesn't hit the Bollinger Band, but it stays embedded, then it's probably a window envelope. And if you are a subscriber of mine to my morning subscriber video for ETFs and spiders, I use window envelopes and I show you how to use them. And on my online course, the enhanced course on Bollinger Band, and uh, stochastics, I bring windows envelopes into them. And the reason is they're so important with this combination. When I look at QQQ, still bearish. So I realize we're getting a bounce. I realize we're oversold. And I realize, again, that combination of the 100-day average and Bollinger Band, it worked in forming that leg of a bottom. But nothing here is saying that the market has bottomed out. That's the big problem. It's still bearish. No, I don't think you're attracting short selling since you're oversold. And that's why I think the market's able to rally here. In the emerging markets, what the market needs to see is stability out of U.S. interest rates for this to say, okay, maybe we've made our bottom. Because as the dollar keeps going up on that cycle of higher rates drives the dollar higher, you got to get to the point where higher rates hurt the dollar and then those other markets come up. 
Is that number 171819? I don't know what the 10-year uh, note has to go to to do that, but that's what I think's at work. Are we trending? Absolutely not. You have a lower low now in a higher high in a sideways action by the Bollinger Band. You have momentum up, bias up, no trend at work. In GLD, you don't want to be short anymore. It's that simple. The market yesterday did not lose its embedded reading. We talked about that. If it was going to lose it, it's got to be today because you're up so much and you lost it. The only time you can get bearish again on this now is if you re-embed, and that's generally done right off the bat in the first hour or so of trading. I'm not saying it can't be longer, but my experience has shown that. If not, I think on pullbacks of any type, you're going to see the pros buying the market for what's called a lost embedded slow stochastic trade. And what that is, it's the only instance I know where they go long under the 18-day average looking for that number to be hit. Now, it could be a different moving average, but they're all the major ones are all above the market, so it's going to be that one. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. If they do that, they wouldn't want the market to get back under the lows of the, uh, two days ago, and that was 157.13, so 157.12 would be the stop, looking for 164 and a quarter, but that 64 and a quarter number is going to drop. You're going to lose move days of higher settlements here and replace it with lower ones, so that's dropping, and it's dropping right now at about 50 cents a day, so it's going to be closer to 163.75 tomorrow. Uh, the gold miners, this is, again, a market, and here, here you get to the play. This is what I want to teach you on this. Here is a market that's got its embedded reading. I'm going to go to the next day. Not embedded. Let's go back three days. Embedded, both numbers under 20, under 20, under 20. There could be more. We don't care. Once you lose it with a 21 reading, over 20, I'm looking now for price in the 18-day average to come together, as I just said on GLD, as long as you don't re-embed in that first hour or so of trading. It would take a break back under these lows to probably do that. You didn't do that. You kept it right there. I think the pros went long looking for the 18-day average with a stop under the most recent low. It's a gutsy trade, admittedly, but they lost the momentum. Boom. And that's where I think they came out. And you got to that yesterday. TLT never did embed. So you're getting a bounce, and that's all. Are we trending? No. You got a lower and low, higher high, correcting an oversold condition, and the bias is cleanly to the downside. Let the market tell us what it wants to do next. Last in the euro, are we going to embed? Well, both numbers were under 20 today. Yesterday, both under 20, and the day before under 20. You're embedded. So until this red line's over 20, ideally over 21, I say that the rallies on this are going to get sold by the pros. A lot of resistance up at the 112.95, uh, 113.03, looking for another challenge to the downside. Time will tell if I'm right or wrong. You know, the idea when I say I put out my morning spider ETF for you is for you to bounce ideas off of what I'm seeing on the charts. I start recording typically at 8.40 in the morning, barring computer glitches, which I do get. Today was funny. Uh, my own computer system locked me out. Apparently, my browser kept hitting the computer, and I didn't know it was going on, and it thought somebody was trying to hack it, and it shut me out. It took me an hour later <laughs> for us to figure out what had gone on, and our IP provider uh, finally got us going on it. But what I do is I cover a whole spectrum of markets for you, all the major sectors of uh, spiders and ETFs, Monday through Friday morning. They're typically out right after 9.30ish that I try to get them to you. Um, on the weekends, a weekend version, where you're only getting weekend charts, in other words, weekly charts for the bigger picture. Do I mix weekly and daily during the uh, Monday through Friday period? I do, because sometimes I'm trying to make a point. Unlike what I do here, telling you what the event is and where I think the pros are going to do things, I'm telling you what I want to do in the spiders and the ETF in the morning. It's very different. I think you might get a kick out of it. You're not committing to anything but uh, $8.95 for 30 days. If you want to try it, go to our website.
And up at the word research, everything you need is there. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.